Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Legacy of Thrax The Awakening. Legacy of Thrax is brought to you by Savidia Studios. It's for one to four players, ages 14 and up, and games generally run 90 to 150 minutes. It all started three years ago. The Awakening came and it changed the people. Three great clans arose, each claiming supremacy. The brutally strong warriors who knew no mercy. The mages with their superhuman magic who were the masters of spells beyond imagination, and the brilliant engineers who created the most wondrous of inventions. The philosophies of the clans became increasingly self-centric and inevitably their lust for power led to this fateful war. Horrific losses have mounted on all sides. Desperate for a swift victorious resolution to the war, each of the clan leaders now seeks to find and enter the legendary city of Damara. Within its sacred walls, they hope to acquire an ancient power that might vanquish their rivals and bring an end to this bloody conflict. As the last hero of your clan, guide lost souls, mine valuable crystals, find unique relics, and increase your glory in battle, bringing you ever closer to Damara. Conquer tactical fortresses and castles, capture villages, and overcome magical barriers to obtain the ultimate prize and defeat your foes. So this is not really a narrative game per se, but it does have a rich story behind it. They even provide this fantastic story book. Now, again, this doesn't have scenarios in it. It's not gonna lead you through anything in the game, but just the fascinating story behind this world and the clans, really worth the read. I didn't read the whole thing, but I did go through parts of it and I found it very enjoyable. So if you like rich story in worlds, it has it for sure. But the game itself is just about collecting resources so you can unlock the gates and get to Damara. And that's your main goal is to be the first one to do so. Now there's several different game modes here and there's all kinds of resources that you need to manage as you would imagine. But the different types of modes, you have your basic mode, which is a great way to get your feet wet, to learn the game. And then you have the clan mode where everyone is gonna have their own character board, where you have special powers, your own set of action cards, things like that, and ways to upgrade your character and make them bigger and better. And then you have a one versus mini mode where someone plays the shadow and they can upgrade their powers and put curses out onto the board. And their main whole goal is to stop all the players from getting Damar, and if they do, they get a ton of victory points at the end of the game, but they have their own board along the side, along with their own character board and so forth. That adds a lot of play, but I think the main aspect of this game is the clan game, where you're playing your character, trying to unlock those gates, competing with the other players, but there is some nice, interesting, semi-cooperative aspects when you do play that one versus many, for sure. And then they have a solo, kind of cooperative version of the game as well, but I think, the shadow mode, which is with the shadow warrior, one versus many, and the clan is really the main focus of the game. So regardless of which version or mode of the game you're playing, you're gonna be managing basically the same set of resources. So your resource board is pretty universal. It shows your income for the start of the round, and based on different areas that you control, you get additional income. But more importantly, it shows your silver, your gold, your mana, your hit points. Yes, hit points are not traditional here. They are really another resource to manage. And then you've got glory points. Now, you can never be knocked out of the game. Hit points make, might make you think that, but it's really, again, like I said, just a resource. So the thing about it is that you're using all these, these different resources to navigate this world, as well as unlock the gates to get to Damara. So, there's different levels of difficulty for these gates. We've got right here, what I have in play is the easy one, but based on you know how many times you've played the game and how familiar you are with it, you might be more challenged to put the more difficult gates in play because they're gonna cost more resources and so forth. But in general, you're gonna be paying resources like health and gold. You're gonna be looking for relics to help you go to unlock these gates. You're gonna be looking for the different crystals to finish quests. You hope to achieve certain glory aspects on your board so you can go and unlock the different gates and so forth. But the interesting thing here is just how you put all that together. There's so many options as you travel this world and visit the different buildings. So as you'd expect in a game like this, you have a standard set of actions to navigate this world. But you as the hero to navigate the world, to move around, you're gonna have to pay gold to do so. However, there are options by taking over villages, you get cars that you can make your own roads. You have 10 possible roads you can create, which will discount your movement through the world. But you also will be using mana 
to navigate the lost souls. They're like NPCs. You can send them off to do your bidding. There's some buildings and areas only they can enter. There's others only the heroes can enter. And there's others that all anybody can go and do the various actions of the buildings. Now there's so many different buildings with so many options. Again, all geared toward managing your resources. But one of the really neat things, I love player aids in games, and this is just a prototype, but wow, they did a nice job with this player aid for all the different building types. I mean, there's so many different ones here. We're not gonna dive into each of them. It would be way too long. But just know that they are all here, really, meant to help you manage your resources and get different things like relics. You go get a relic, you need five of those, and that's one of the possible actions you can do on your turn, is unlock a gate because you've collected five relics. And again, the gates are gonna have their own individual cost to do so. You'll place your marker on a gate that you've completed. And you're gonna be moving eventually when you move through the portals at the top to move into Damara, you're gonna be unlocking the gates and moving along this path in order to get to the city or the ultimate power that you're trying to achieve. So you hope to be the first one there, but you have to be mindful about when you enter this area at the top. You have to do it very strategically and when it makes sense because you're gonna need your heroes still to navigate this world and get resources every round of the game. And there's battles in the game as you would expect. You're gonna have battle cards and whoever has the highest value between your clan board and your uh, battle cards is gonna win that battle. And uh, you're gonna get you know glory points for going into battle. You'll get glory points for taking over fortresses, another way to unlock gates. So, and quests, again, are another way as well. So, lots of interesting aspects about how and where you go, and I think that's why I get this vibe of a sandbox feel, because you can really just go along any path that you want, and really just how best to manipulate your resources to get those gates open and be the first one to do so. And the different various modes of the game really change up how you play. It plays very different, for sure. And there's days, so based on the length of the game you want to play, every round of the game is a day, and eventually you'll end off, and the game will come to an end. And you'll either total points, or you're going to see who has made it to two Damara first. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, there's a lot of different game modes here. It's something for everybody, really. You've got the solo play, a semi-cooperative aspect when you go up against the one versus many. Really interesting, but I felt like the clan mode is where it really shines for me. I like the aspect of managing all those resources, but also kind of developing your character along the way. And then, of course, closing out these gates to be the first one. It feels like a race to some degree, and how you best get there first. So folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table. Yeah.